So this week is Pentecost Sunday, and um, the passage that we just read from Ezekiel that talked about breath, the word, and I've done this before, the word, the Jewish word is ruach. So ruach means breath and wind and life. Um, that Hebrew word can mean all of those things. And so we have uh, the spirit, which is also another way to translate ruach. Not only spirit, wind, life, breath, um, all of those things. And it makes sense. <laughs> when we breathe, we expel. And it can, <laughs> this last year plus, we've been expelling lots of things out in our breath that haven't been as good. But that breath meant life. And if there's any time, though, again, we've known that it's been this past year when the COVID vaccine would, the COVID-19 virus would get into someone and cause them not to be able to breathe. And once you can't breathe, there is no life. So for ancient Hebrew, who didn't even know all those things, they knew that once a human being stopped breathing, breath was gone, their life was gone, their spirit was gone. And they believed that God had given them that breath and spirit, and of course, that is what had given them life. So God had all of those things, and we're giving them all of those things. And so when they talked about um, this event on uh, Pentecost, then it talked about the breath and wind of God coming down in a new way. Also, I'll do my other explanation. <laughs> uh, Pentecost was a festival in Jewish history, and so everybody would come to Jerusalem that could. It was like coming to Jerusalem for Passover. If you could come and celebrate, you would, and so uh, they would go. It's kind of like going to New Year's Eve in New York City if it's not a pandemic. So all of those things were typical for this ancient world, and so whoever could, was faithful, would come to Jerusalem for Pentecost. Pentecost celebrated, um, as a friend of mine once said, the first harvest of barley and wheat, which they made into a drinking liquid that they enjoyed. <laughs> so um, also that became known as the time in which they remembered that uh, God had given the law of Mo to Moses on Mount Sinai. And so Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible, was celebrated on Pentecost, um, 50 days after, for them, Passover, for us, uh, Easter. So all of those things are happening in this text. And it says, when the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. This is the disciples, the 120 folk. Um, I was talking on Wednesday on live feed, not here. But there were about 120 folks who had gathered and were faithful and were singing hymns and just talking to each other, waiting in Jerusalem as Jesus had told them to do. And so they were all together in one place. And without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It lifted the whole building. It filled the whole building. Then, like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages, and the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. And when they heard the sound, they came at the run. They, and then they heard one another after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, and they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out how this was going on. And they kept saying, aren't these Galileans? Translate, dumb hit folk. <laughs> how is it that we're hearing them speak in the various tongues? Parthians, Medes, Amalites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Philia, Asia, and Pamphylia. Egypt and parts of Libya, belonging to Sire, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even creeds and Arabs. I have nightmares about that passage. They are speaking in their own language, describing God's mighty works. Their heads are spinning and they can't even make tales of tales of it. And they talk back and forth confused, what's going on here? And others joked, yeah, they're drunk on cheap wine. And then Peter stood up. Backed by the other eleven, he spoke out in bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get the story straight. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit. 
spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy and also your daughters. Young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy and they'll see wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and filling smoke, the sun turned to black and the moon to blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day of tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out to me, God will save them. There is the reading. May God add a blessing. It is Pentecost that is the birthday of the church. It is Pentecost in which God poured out the Spirit in a way it had never been. The Spirit, though what we call the Holy Spirit, was in creation as the Spirit moved across the dark waters and brought forth light. All of that continued, and there were times in the Old Testament that God's Holy Spirit was poured out on prophets like Ezekiel or Elijah or Jeremiah, and certainly was present when Moses received the tablets on Mount Sinai. And so all of this is continuing to do what God has always been doing in calling the people back to life calling the people to know that God is real, that I am here. And so, as Jesus has lived his life full of God's Spirit, had obviously been filled with that Holy Spirit, the people are now waiting. And the thing that changes, and again, this is Mary's theology. What I think happened was that Jesus said, I'll be right back, meaning that God's presence would be right back with us. And that as that Pentecost event happened, God comes back. God comes back in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so people who have been from lots of different places in life, who have been in lots of different cultures, suddenly can hear clearly what God has done. God has sent his son into the world, who lived a life of care and healing and prophecy, even in terms of saying, the kingdom of God is near, and healing, and hope, and that the world couldn't stop it. The evil, the power, the violence of the world couldn't stop it. And it came back to let us know that it was not stopped. And then in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we believe in. We are not really a Holy Spirity church, <laughs> and I'm good with that. There are churches that are more keyed into the Spirit, and that works for them, and that's cool. But for us, we're more of a singing loud kind of group than a yelling loud kind of group, and that's good. Because that's how the Spirit moves in our heart, and that's how God speaks to us. And for me, the gift of God, besides all of the ones that I talk about all the time, one of the gifts of God is that God meets us where we are exactly where we are. That was the Holy Spirit experience. Those men and women had been gathered for 10 days, is what the scripture says. At 40 days, Jesus went up. At 50 days, there was this outpouring of the Spirit. They had been there waiting, ready to receive God and what God was doing next. And so when the Holy Spirit was poured out, they were like, yeah, we're ready. Let's do this. And Peter began speaking boldly. Peter begins telling all of the scriptures being fulfilled. And so what Luke, the writer, wants you to know and what we inherit is that this was the same God at Earth's creation. This was the same God that had brought the people out of Egypt from slavery into freedom. This was the same God who had sent Jesus into the world. This was the same God who had resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. It was the same God who was speaking to us and speaking to Ezekiel that these dry bones can live. And that is the good news of Jesus Christ. That God never stops reaching out to us. That there isn't a time or a place that God isn't there with us. And for those of us who have journeyed our lifetime in faith, there's lots of times in my life that I've said, God, I am not happy with you. <laughs> I am angry with you. I am up to here with life. I think one of those moments in time that I remember strongly was when 
one of the kids who had been in my Sunday school class, uh, he was 16, really for the last two years, because I had also gone through confirmation with him, um, died suddenly. And he was, to me, the best kid. He was a great kid, a very caring kid. Um, just, uh, when I gave him an assignment for my, again, you can imagine 16 year olds, how much are they gonna wanna do an assignment for Pastor Mary? Okay, go home this week and find a psalm that you like and read it and tell me why you like it. Who did it? <laughs> Jack. <laughs> And he was the kid who died. And so I think for that entire year, probably, I was pretty angry with God. But what I found was that in that um, conversation, I could get as angry as I wanted, yell at God as much as I wanted, and I never felt God's presence leave me once. I believe that that Holy Spirit means that God dwells within us and wants us to talk to God. Again, my parenting tells me, or at least my attempt at parenting tells me, that I was much better if my kids were at least talking to me about what was going on in their lives. I didn't always like what I heard, but I wanted them talking to me, continuing and building relationship. And so for me, that's what this Pentecost Sunday says. Not that we are filled with the Spirit and can do miraculous things, although, okay, that would be fun. But that we're filled with the Spirit and we can feel that life of God in us. That we can know that God's love is real. That as he keeps on saying to Ezekiel, that you'll know that I'm God because I'm bringing life into you. And there is a God and there is a love and there is a power that we can always turn to no matter what. And at the end of the Ezekiel passage it says, For those who call upon the Lord will be saved. And sometimes we put that over in the after I'm dead category. I was out on the creek again yesterday. <laughs> creek is a very interesting place, as I've said quite often. <laughs> and I was pausing just a minute, and there's a guy handing out a pamphlet, so nice, Mary takes the pamphlet, you know. <laughs> and I, I look at the front and says, do you know where you're going? And I said, I know exactly where I'm going. Thank you. <laughs> and so often that, you know, those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We kind of put it into that bank of, you know, once you're dead, uh, we'll go be with God. Which, again, good thing. Living it much more now, with not whatever age I am, than before. But for me, the best news is that this passage says to me that the very breath that I breathe is God's spirit within me. That every single time I take a breath, God is breathing in me and reaching out to me. That God wants to be a part of my life, my days, my nights, my good times, and my really hard, yicky times. That God is present there. And one of the things that always uh, convinces me that my faith is true, even though, you know, again, I have that emotional connection. And in my body and in my bones, I feel that it's true. Still, I see who Peter is. Okay? So, the message every scripture says, uh, all the four Gospels. The four Gospels say <laughs> that when the rubber hit the road and Jesus was being arrested, Peter goes, I don't know the guy. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Good luck. And it's Peter. There's no, you know, whitewashing it. There's no saying, oh, yeah, Peter was a good guy and stood tall. I'm not saying I would have done any different. Jesus is headed to a cross, and Peter knows exactly what that means. But Peter lays low. Peter hides out in the room, locked, making sure nobody's going to get him. Those are the images of Peter until we have Pentecost Sunday and the outpouring of the Spirit. And yes, he's been with Jesus in the last 40 days. And yes, he's been praying for the past 10 days, which is all good. But when the Spirit is poor, Peter gets up and goes, Hey, no, we're not drunk. Let me tell you what happened. Joel's prophecy was fulfilled. We are seeing the visions that God promised. We are seeing the Spirit that God promised. And not only that, Peter, in the next verses, if you want to go home and read it, starts going, I love this 
part. Because he stands up in front of the Jewish authorities and he goes, yeah, Jesus was the Son of God and you guys killed him on a tree. Didn't work. And I say, okay, what happened to this guy? How is this transition occurring? And it seems to me the simplest and the easiest answer is what the scripture is saying is true. That God's spirit, which had been given in certain places and at certain times throughout the Old Testament and certainly lived fully in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, suddenly is becoming a moving force that is incredible. And that's really the story of the book of Acts. It says the story of the book of Acts of the Apostles, if you look at the real long title. But really, it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's what God is moving and doing. What I believe is that that same Holy Spirit is here. Because what I believe about the eternal nature of God is that God always is. In this present moment, God is. God is the God who created the same God. God is the God of Mount Sinai telling Moses how to form community and how to live within a certain rule. God is the one who resurrected Jesus from the dead. God is the one who is with us now. All 13 of us. <laughs> and you know, there's a part of me that, you know, I used to, again, I used to be in a church where we had 300 on a Sunday. And I think sometimes it was a little bit easier to believe, you know, God's spirit was moving if you had a lot of folk. And we used to have confirmation classes that were good size. And so you would spend the entire, we would do it on Pentecost Sunday, which is why I'm thinking of them. And it would take some time. It was fun. There was a little more, more, yeah, really. But I think, um, again, I was a decade in a church that uh, we had a lot of confirmants and I was a decade in a church where we had even more confirmants and I'm here for almost a decade now. The thing is, is that so often when you would bring those young people into the church, that was the last you saw of them. I'm uh, alive long enough now that I've seen some of those kids come back to church as Actually, one of the kids just turned 40, and I said, no, <laughs> that's not fair. But so I've seen them throughout their life, and some of them have come back to church. But that's not it. Whether a big, huge church or us church or even just being in my, uh, at my counter talking to my phone, God is. God is there with us. God is waiting to hear us call out. God just wants to hear how our day is going. God wants to be that breath for us to know. Again, I believe our breath is that Holy Spirit. I believe that we're created in the divine image of God. I believe that God is always with us. But oftentimes, we are distracted and don't know. And some folks don't even believe. For me, I don't think that alters the reality that God is. God's spirit is with us. And then any time, any place, we can talk to God and hear that response from me. I know that the spirit will empower us to reach out and do as we are commanded. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and might. To love our brother as ourselves. No. I don't have the power in me know anybody who does to do that on my own and so God has sent the Holy Spirit God has spent that breath into my life continues to breathe into my life and so after and hopefully in the last days hopefully the last however of this pandemic if we ask can these dry bones live can we make it to the next place God says yes I think when God says yes, there's no reason for us to say no. <laughs> when God says yes, that we can live into that new hope and new life and new grace that God gives us. And so on Pentecost, we celebrate. The Spirit is here. The Spirit is within us because our breath is there. And that is God breathing new life and new hope and new joy into each part of our lives.